Okay. All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is, uh, today we have Charlie from Student Care to give a presentation um, about our legal protection program. So Charlie, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Uh, yeah, I'm here today to, to talk to you about a really exciting program that uh, as PGSS members, uh, you you have access to, you're already enrolled in this, and um, I'll go over some of the details of uh, what it composes and uh, what it can, how it can help you. So what is it? Uh, the Legal Protection Program is something that has been available to uh, PGSS members since last year, uh, and it is a um, legal support service or legal protection uh, service that give access to um, the PGSS, PGSS members to professional lawyers, specialized lawyers to get consultation and representation uh, and essentially give them the, the robust tools to protect their rights and remove as many barriers as possible, financial barrier being the most important one, in order for them to get access to, uh, to various le levels of legal support uh, in, in many different areas that are important to um, uh, students and, and, and PGSS members. So who's covered? Everybody who's uh, any student who's a member of the PGSS is automatically enrolled in this program. And, um, and there's an opportunity to opt out during the change of uh, coverage period if that is something that you feel uh, you, you want to or need to do. And I'll go over where to do that uh, later on in the presentation. So the Legal Protection Program is composed of two main, uh, I guess, blocks of services. The first one is legal consultation, and that could be for any legal topic or any legal area whatsoever. Uh, I'll go over in detail what, what that is. And the second one is full legal representation in these six different areas. So disputes with the academic institution, employment disputes, housing disputes, human rights dispute, small claim support. Uh, this is something that is... Um, uh, very important in Quebec. Uh, lawyers aren't allowed to come represent individuals in small claims, so uh, they do a whole lot of work up to the doors of the, the tribunals or courtrooms. And then civil mediation uh, to help you uh, or any students really try to resolve uh, a, a dispute uh, more amicably, perhaps. And so what is included in this program? So um, it's it works as an uncapped model in the sense that uh, the students can access it as often as required. There's no limits on the amount of times that it can be accessed. There's also no limits on the amount uh, of time a discussion or case can take. So uh, if uh, if a student wants, wants to or needs to speak to a lawyer for, I don't know, uh, two years, it can happen under this program. Uh, that is something that is determined with your lawyer as you're discussing it. Uh, the, the third one that's very important, that there's no... Um, no extra out-of-pocket expenses after that uh, initial contribution has been made at the beginning of the year, so the, the annual uh, prepaid fee. And so all of the legal fees and legal expenses that are accumulated uh, as lawyers work with you on a particular case or discussion or situation are all included in there. There's, there's no extras. And finally, as I mentioned, there's a, the opportunity to unconditionally opt out uh, during the uh, essentially the first month of the change of coverage period at the beginning of the, the year, and uh, a full refund will be uh, sent to you uh, for the, the uh, fee that, uh, that this program uh, cost you. So the first portion is legal consultation. So this is really exciting where, uh, in a sense, it's almost like having a lawyer on retainer. Uh, and your own personal lawyer on retainer, where you can uh, sit down with them, sit down, you know, virtually or over the phone or even in person, if that's something that that may be required, and um, and you'll be able to discuss any matter with them, whatever that may be. There's no area of law that is uh, that is off limits here. So it could be anything from. Uh, you know, some, something as simple as a traffic ticket or a parking ticket that perhaps uh, you feel that you want to fight or you want to know what potentially you can do about it, uh, to immigration uh, uh, law areas and, and immigration issues or, or questions about the process or whatever it may be, to housing issues, to something more complex and more uh, more serious that so such as um, discrimination, har harassment, and, um, and, you know, God forbid, something like assault or, or something like that. And so uh, through this service or through this part of the service, um, you know, the lawyers will uh, really take a personal approach to the management of your case or discussion. And so uh, they'll take it as long as needed to, to listen to the experience or to the story that the students uh, present to them, uh, extract all of the information that they can from there. So what 
areas are um, have legal components that can, work can be done on. They'll do research on those to provide the best information and compose their legal advice and and then um, and legal opinions. And then they'll provide the students with that legal opinion, that legal advice, and that strategy to move forward on that particular situation. Uh, the access is quick, so uh, between. 24 to 48 hours after that initial request for a, uh, a legal consultation, uh, the legal partners will uh, contact the students and start this consultation that is um, that is completely confidential. It's privileged, so it's between it becomes a relationship between the lawyer and the students, which is their client. And so um, we are completely removed from that as a student care, as the as the administrator or as the PGSS as well. And so, as I mentioned, no area of law is off limits here. Uh, every, anything can be discussed uh, for as long as needed. And so this is a really important and, and valuable um, situation. I like to think of it as a, as a legal 911 in a sense where um, if, if you've had uh, any sort of uh, first aid training, instructor will generally tell you to, whenever in doubt, call 911 and there will never be a penalty for, for doing that. And so this is the same situation where um, if you've experienced a uh, an odd interaction at work or with a professor or with a landlord or anything like that, call it and a legal professional will be available to um, well to provide, provide, uh, provide some validation on the situation and clarify some things and and perhaps move forward on some other issues that as as it as it gets discussed. So uh, I think it's a very a very very important component of this. The second component of uh, the program is the legal representation. And so here it goes one step further than that consultation aspect where the lawyers will also then take charge of the all the proceedings and all the actions that may be uh, required to resolve that dispute. And this is in the six areas that, uh, that were shown before. So the housing disputes is anything where there is an agreement between a, a landlord and a tenant. And that can be anything from um, uh, inc uh, increases uh, in uh, in uh, rent that is uh, perhaps without the proper notice, uh, difficult living conditions, not pest control, not being remediated, or or bad bad living conditions. So many examples there. Employment disputes. Anytime there's an agreement uh, between an employer and an employee, anything that has to do with that. Disputes with the academic institution is. Anything that has to do with, uh, you know, academic situations, so accusation perhaps of plagiarism or um, uh, disputes on on um, cheatings or, or things like that fall within that, but also just policies and other decisions that the institutions, in this case McGill, have made on their campus that may be uh, problematic for the students. So, you know, uh, accessibility uh, policies or uh, perhaps discrimination policies or anything that may fall in the, within uh, the life on campus would be applicable here as well. Uh, and so as uh, as postgraduate student, um, this is an interesting situation here where, uh, you know, PGSS members could potentially be both students and employees of the institution, making it, uh, first of all, a complex interaction, but also something where there's both two avenues in which uh, potential di disputes can be resolved for uh, for the PGSS members. The fourth one would be uh, human rights uh, disputes. And so this has anything to do with, uh, well, discrimination or har harassment situations. So the human rights uh, code has specific uh, areas in which uh, these, these fall. And so we have a le a specialized lawyers to work on this. Small claim support is uh, anytime a student wants to go to small claims court to um, to resolve, I don't know, a, a dispute around a the purchasing of a vehicle that wasn't as advertised, or uh, perhaps a roommate uh, owes money or has broken something. Anyways, you can go through this program. And uh, in Quebec, uh, lawyers are not allowed to come uh, represent a, an individual and small claims. So through this program, the students will be will have the support of a lawyer all the way to the doors of the uh, I guess of the courtroom, and uh, to prepare the case, the statements, the evidence, whatever is needed to have a strong argument to come there prepared, and then be able to um, to put all of the chances on on the side of students to have a a, a favorable verdict. And finally, civil mediation um, it gives the the students uh, 
the opportunity to request the services of uh, some of the lawyers that have, are specialized in mediation to act as that impartial um, third party to resolve an issue between two other parties. And so these are three things that would, uh, sorry, four, uh, six <laughs> aspects that would be quite helpful and uh, and would the lawyers um, take an active role in, in uh, resolving the disputes. And when I say the action, it could be anything from um, speaking to the other party on their behalf, negotiating for the students, writing formal notices or letters, um, all the way to going to court or tribunals to uh, resolve and plead for the for the students on those situations. So, uh, you know, it's a quite a wide variety of services that fall within what representation is. And, uh, you know, we all have that uh, that vision of lawyers from from TV going to court. And it's kind of that aspect of it. So the program includes uh, so it's it's about it's twenty five dollars annual fee for uh, PGSS members, and it includes, as I mentioned, all of the fees for the lawyers, as well as the bailiff fees, uh, the legal expenses. Um, so it could be court fees, attendance fees, expert witness fees, stenography fees. There's a whole bunch of fees that are associated with that. Um, there's no amounts that is so there's no out of pocket expenses that uh, that fall there. Uh, the time is uh, time use is, is uh, uncapped, as well as the amount of time that is being used. And then an interesting uh, point is that as, so, as long as a case starts while um, a student is a member of the program, it continues until its completion, even if that means it's after graduation. So if a case continues for two more years after the student has graduated, it continues to be handled by the program without any extra costs. So it's really to ensure that um, all cases get handled appropriately and also justice system is slow so uh it would be it would not be helpful if the case just stops all of a sudden just because that has occurred we have some examples of uh situations or cases that have gone through this program uh, real life situations of course we've moved removed any identifiers for uh for these individuals but the first one is uh, an intellectual property and copyright issue that happened in an academic setting which could be relatable here in in the pgss as uh, as many of you are working on uh, i guess new inventions or new processes or new new ways to uh, to resolve or, or work on different things so that also means that there's some questions around who has the ownership of this or or who should get some recognition for uh, the work that's being done so a student that was having one of these disputes on a particular situation uh, was not being recognized for the work that they had. Oh, I moved to case two, sorry. Um, that were not being recognized for the work that uh, were they, they had done on the this various, uh, this, this work. And so they uh, they contacted the uh, the lawyers in the, in the legal protection program. And so the result of this, uh, I'll skip over all the, uh, the little work, but the lawyers were able to get, first of all, the student recognized for the work they've done, rights to the work that they've done. And as they work through this, uh, it's about $1,600 worth of legal fees that were accumulated for that case on the, on the student's behalf that the student did not have to, to contribute themselves for. Um, so essentially, they, they got that value for $25, plus the fact that, uh, you know, there's a rebalancing of uh, of powers now between the student and uh, the other parties involved in this situation. So thankfully, the student was able to get recognized for their work. A second example, and so this is in the, uh, the housing context. So uh, this is a student that had uh, who had two children, and uh, there was daily harassment from their landlord uh, to uh, to move out, essentially, so that the landlord could increase the rent um, kind of arbitrarily really and so um it became very difficult to uh to live in that and also there was some uh some sanitary concerns on uh there was mold that was not being remediated in your apartment at the same time and so the students contacted the that were gained access to the program requested the help of the lawyers and they were able to uh, work through there's there were two cases here the harassment and then the living conditions but the result was that uh, not only was the rent reduced to what uh, from to what they paid before, they also received thirty eight thousand dollars of damages uh, for the, for their troubles, 
And as the as the students, so as the lawyers work through the program, it accumulated they accumulated around fifty thousand dollars worth of legal fees and legal expenses as they worked. And so, if you take all that, it's it's a uh, almost it's eighty or almost ninety thousand dollars worth of um, of uh, value of dollar dollar amount that was uh, that the, the student received. Uh, for uh, for all of the troubles and for the situation, and there's still a second part of the case that is still ongoing that I, I can't share, unfortunately. But uh, this is also an example of what can happen. And finally, there's uh, a third example, and this is uh, for discrimination at work. So this student um, was self, um, uh, uh, I guess, declared as having um, Asp Asperger's syndrome. So uh, you know that is where uh, they they have. Um, difficulty showing perhaps emotion. And so um, the employers were, uh, she, the student was doing a fine job at work and they were performing very well, but uh, the employer was, I guess, citing uh, behavioral incompatibilities with the rest of the team or, or perhaps they don't wanna deal with that. I don't exactly know all the details. However, they were let go because of that. And so uh, the students fought this and uh, and also cited oppressive behavior as part of it and so they were the student naturally did not want to return to this employer but received forty thousand dollars fourteen thousand dollars in damages um, and the case is still ongoing and so i don't have a sum of how much work has been accumulated by the lawyers but anyways that is another example of uh, where this can can be helpful and finally not an example but just a general uh, the general philosophy for instance international students um, when you come to a to a new um, a new uh, country, uh, there's different laws, different standards of practices, whether it's at, at housing, employers. There's a lot of unknowns, and so this could be tremendously helpful for uh, international students to just have the ability to access legal professionals that will be able to tell them what to expect, what to um, what their responsibilities are, and what their rights are in various situations, and so. It really um, limits the, that feeling of, of being isolated and not weighing, knowing where to turn whenever there's uh, a, perhaps a difficult situation or really any situation. Uh, and so I think this is particularly helpful for international students where it's an easy access to uh, a very valuable resource with, uh, with many different areas that they can, they can uh, use. So this is the, the information on, on the change of coverage period. So for the PGSS, it is between August 23rd to September 29th. Um, you can go to the website in order to access the, uh, the change of coverage period. And uh, I'll show you actually um, what this website is. So here, if you type in studentcare.ca and then you choose your, uh, your association, so the PGSS, you get access to this and it gives you an overview of everything that you have. So legal, dental, vision, et cetera, et cetera. If you click on the legal portion, it gives you a description of everything that I've said so far. This is also the way here, request support here, where you can gain access to programs. So if you click here, it gives you a smart form and you fill in some information, which essentially gives us your eligibility um, and also uh, your contact information and things like that. And the reason why you request it. So here you would select uh, legal program and then uh, next step, and then you can also write a little description if you want to, and then it's directly transferred to our legal partners, and then they'll they'll contact you in order to, um, to begin that legal consultation and potentially that legal um, the legal um, representation should that need to be there. And at the bottom of the page, there's also the opt out, uh, I guess, instructions. So it gives you the information on everything, and then if you click on opt out of legal you can get to that portion where it gives you a description again so you ensure that you're aware of what you're opting out of and then the opportunity to opt out should you uh, require to do so and that is it for me uh, so you know it really is uh, if you have any questions of course i rec i uh, I uh, highly recommend that you reach out to your PGSS members and then they can transfer those to me and I can respond to them um, and help you with, with anything but really this is the a program designed to give students access to better access to legal support, legal um, services in the various spectrums that, that exist. So consultation, representation, and remove as many barriers as possible from financial barriers that are quite significant. 
all the way to lack of information, lack of lack of knowledge, lack of support, lack of, of easy access to things. And so this is really designed for for that purpose. And uh, and I hope that you uh, you use it as uh, as you see fit. And um, I really want to encourage you to uh, to contact the lawyer because they are fantastic. I've I've had the opportunity to um, to speak to many of them, and they're they're really uh, we we choose the partners that we have. So in, in Quebec, it is um, a Novum Legal. Um, they're based out of Montreal, so you can actually go to their offices and speak to them uh, directly uh, for the consultation. But they are uh, aligned with the values of uh, student unions, as they are uh, they they are lawyers that work with unions on their various issues. So they align on those issues, and really they that we give students a. Uh, uh, lawyers on their side completely to help them with various issues and that's it for me i'll stop talking because you've heard me enough <laughs> all right thank you so much charlie